Today I'm sharing no less than seven classy and chic French handbags with a review of the collection at Palem Paris. Now if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll already know that I'm a huge fan of the Parisian brand Palen. I love the styles, the quality, and of course the color palette. And after lots of requests from lovely subscribers, I thought it was about time I did a full review of their collection. I do feel very lucky to have worked with Palen a lot, so I do already have a lovely selection of their handbags. However, as I mentioned in my French Women Chic lookbook that I did recently, if you've missed that one, I will pop a link in the description box below. But there I mentioned that I borrowed a selection of Palen Paris handbags so I could really give you a good idea of all the different styles and the color palette that they're available in. Don't forget everything I feature in today's video will be linked in the description box below along with a link for you to follow me on all my other social channels should you wish. So today I'll be talking you through their range pretty much in full. I have the very classy numero un, the mini un, the nano, the incredibly chic numero set both large and small, the new in numero di hobo, the numero huit, and the timeless French chic le cabas. In fact, I think I'm only missing the numero neuf. However, I have actually seen that in person too, so I can give you my opinion on that one as well. Essentially, if you've been debating purchasing one of their handbags, this video should give you the full rundown of everything you need to know. So let's start this review at the very beginning with the classy, timeless and best-selling numero un. Now I have this myself in the monochrome black. This is the textured version and I've also borrowed it in the grey so I can show you this tone as a lovely alternative. Now I probably use this handbag the most out of all of my handbags and I would say that's mostly down to the size. It can fit just about everything I like to take around with me which is quite quite a lot. So the numero un is a very feminine shape with all these lovely gentle curves and I do find it a really classy addition to all my outfits, it just suddenly makes me feel more elevated. I could be wearing the most laid back outfit I have but when I add this handbag into the mix I suddenly feel more polished in a very French chic kind of fashion. Now the leather like I mentioned is textured calf grain leather which I think adds to the luxe feeling of the bag and you have these little poppers that retain the shape of that curve but it also gives you the option to open it out bigger should you need more space. Inside you have a zipped pocket as well as two flat pockets and though not big enough for a laptop, you can really get a lot of stuff in here. In fact, that's probably a good idea. Let's see how many things I can get into each of these handbags so you can really get a good idea of just how big they are. Okay, let's have a look. First, my phone. Put my lipstick in the zip pocket so I can get to that easy. Shall we be ambitious and try the entire makeup bag? Hand cream? Yeah, no, there's loads of room in there. So yes, there's lots of space in there if like me you are a bit of a hoarder when it comes to filling up your handbags. And as you can see, doing it up with all of that stuff in it, although it's a bit heavy, it hasn't lost its shape at all. Strap-wise, I tend to wear it probably in four different ways depending on my outfit. Hooked over my arm, you could use the strap over your shoulder, and then of course there is enough room there to go crossbody as well. So it's an elegant, classy, and very timeless design that's got lots of space, and it's beautiful quality of course. It actually feels like it should cost a lot more than it does. Let's take a look now to the newest super chic addition to the Palen handbag collection, the numero di hobo. Now this style is available in both a smaller half moon shape and the larger one which is called the hobo that I've borrowed to share with you in this review. Both styles have been inspired by the equestrian world of saddlery, which now I know I can see that through the detailing across the front here. It's got a curved strap, foam padding and the strap is actually adjustable though I must say I actually prefer leaving it quite short like this so I can wear it over my shoulder. You could however wear it crossbody and long on the shoulder as well if you wanted. Palen Paris very kindly offered if I would like to choose a bag from their collection and I actually went for this one in the chalk. I just think it's very classy and chic especially when I'm trying to channel my inner French woman style. I thought this handbag would work perfectly. Now the D Hobo is actually quite a structured bag, more structured than you would think it is. And that's something I tend to warm to, particularly as I know it really elevates your outfits. This one seems a little bit like the Numero set. It doesn't feel like it's going to lose its shape anytime soon. So taking a look inside, let's see how much we can really get in here. It's not very wide at the bottom, but obviously it's quite long. 
So I think we're gonna get quite a bit in there. Let's do a bit of a stuff test. Phone, it's going to fit easy. Purse, let's go for hand cream. No. I think I might ruin the shape if I tried to put my entire makeup bag in there. So different to the numero un, you've got a flat pocket inside this one rather than a zip. And I think the inside of there is suede. It feels really lovely and soft. So I've not overstuffed the bag, but I've definitely got all my essentials in there that I like to take around with me. And as you can see, we've not lost that beautiful, classy and timeless shape. I love this bag. I am very, very excited for mine to arrive. People often ask me, which is your favorite Palem Paris handbag that you've got? But it's a really hard decision to make because they all seem to offer something different for lots of different occasions, which is kind of where my head's at when I saw the Numero Un Mini in person. I've fallen in love with this one too. I absolutely love it. In fact, doing this video is probably really dangerous for me because I want them all. Smaller than the classic Numero Un, but larger than the Nano. The mini strikes the perfect balance for me. With those gentle folds and subtle hardware, it's just the epitome of French chic. It's simple, it's understated, and so timeless, you would literally have it for years. And if we're keeping points on versatility, I think this particular style would work perfectly both for day and for night. I think the shade of grey they've used is just stunning. The quality is impeccable. The gold hardware stands out, but it's really subtle and elegant, which then in turn feels really effortless. This is just my cup of tea. So if I open the clasp here, like its big sister, it's got the folds here with the poppers, so you can open those out if you want a little bit more space. And as you can see there, for a small handbag, that's got quite a lot of room. So I think to get this size person there, I'm going to need those poppers open. Let's see if I can get that in. No, it's a little bit too tall. Can we go sideways? Do you know, it's a little bit tight width-wise getting that purse in, but I can just about do it. And I could probably close those folds as well. I would just be nervous whether I'm gonna ruin the shape a little bit because I can kind of feel the purse really pulling on that leather there. Now, because I love the bag so much, I probably wouldn't risk it with that particular purse and use something different that's just a tiny bit smaller on the width or maybe just take my cards out. So probably a no on that purse. Obviously, you can get my phone in there and you can get some makeup in there. Um, ooh, could get my hairbrush in there as well. Just about at an angle. So in all honesty, you are going to have to adapt what you put in there. Maybe use a slightly smaller purse. But I personally don't mind at all because I just love the handbag so much. Now, like I mentioned, I was going to order the Numero D Hobo in chalk. But now seeing this one in person, I've kind of lost my heart to it. So do let me know in the comment section, which would you choose? Would you go with a slightly bigger Numero D or the small but perfectly formed Numero Un mini version. I would be very grateful for all your thoughts in the comments section below. Let's go to the number eight handbag now as it's a very different style to the classic number one. What I love about this handbag is that it's essentially a timeless bucket bag but with a really original up-to-date twist. It's such a different shape, I've never seen anything even similar. So that would definitely be plus number one for me, that it's a beautiful statement piece that I haven't seen before. The second thing I love about this French handbag has to be the quality. Not only have the designers come up with a really standout bucket bag, but the craftsmanship is just beautiful. Made from fully grained calf leather again with suede leather lining like their entire collection, it looks and feels far more expensive than it actually is. Now if I open it out here, you can see those folds are actually separate panels all sewn together around the circle. If I pull that there, that's the circle width that you've got to play with. And it's quite long too, so I'm thinking we should be able to get quite a lot in there. So on that note, let's just have a little look. We've got a purse. Yep, um, stuff my hairbrush down the side. Bit of hand cream, phone, and then, no, don't want to ruin it, uh, probably just a few pieces of makeup. Yeah, I can get all of that in. The other thing that's interesting is the shade of blush pink that they've used. And this is something that we often see across the high street and with the big name designers, but I don't think a lot of people get it completely right. Sometimes it feels a little bit acrid pink or a bit too peachy, or a bit too wishy-washy. It's quite a hard one to get right, actually. But I would say Plan have got it spot on. It's that lovely, subtle, classy pink tone. It feels really elegant. In fact, especially if you like neutrals like I do, I think this kind of tone is going to integrate beautifully into all your different outfit ideas. 
I mentioned earlier the Numero set, which I do have in my collection. This one has actually retained its shape beautifully. This doesn't look any different from the day I received it, which was about a year ago, I think. So I went for this in the two-tone smooth camel leather, which suits me and my wardrobe perfectly. But I was eager to have a look at it in the mini version, so I borrowed that from Plum Paris in the textured camel leather to see the difference. Now the first thing that strikes me is how different the camel tone looks depending on whether you go for the smooth leather or the textured leather. Now if I'm honest, I think I prefer the camel palette better in the smooth rather than the grained. That's not a criticism, it's just personal taste really, and what I think would work best in my own wardrobe. A bit like the number 10 handbag, it's not going to lose its shape. I can't even push that out of shape, which is a good sign. I love the gold hardware against camel, definitely a favorite color combination for me. And the nice difference with the mini set is of course that you have the chain strap. That gives you the option to wear it in lots of different ways and of course add an extra sprinkle of gold into your outfits. So let's have a look how much we can squeeze into this very chic mini French handbag. So that's the room inside you've got to play with. So obviously it's not going to fit that big purse, a hairbrush it's not going to go in there and neither is the moisturiser. So you're going to have to adapt what you take around with you if you do like this bag. So you might have noticed I got the number one in camel recently and it's definitely been getting lots of wear in all my outfit ideas. So I decided to borrow it in chalk to see how that changes the whole feel of the bag. And in actual fact, I think it really does. You might have seen I've been styling lots of dresses recently in my videos. If you missed them, I shall link it in the description box below. But this bag seems to work particularly well with those very feminine summer dresses. And as you probably gathered in that video, I kept wanting to reach for this bag to pair with them. It's just the perfect elegant, feminine, timeless touch for when you're wearing a floaty summer dress and maybe you don't want to have a big bulky bag to go with it. The best way I could describe this bag is small but perfectly formed. It's got Palen's best-selling shape at its core but obviously as a small version it gives you the versatility to wear it in more ways. And there's something so effortless about this handbag. Very French I guess. Size-wise it's quite surprising. If I open those poppers at the front here I can just about get my purse and my phone widthways in there and I can manage to do those poppers back up again. I don't need to take that giant purse around with me, it's just a bit of a habit. But as you can see, it's not lost any of that beautiful shape by putting it in there. I like the fact that you've got the studs underneath, which is a running theme with all of their handbags actually, I should point out. Their branding is very subtle, very elegant and effortless. And this one again, you've got a nice long strap so you can wear that crossbody over your shoulder or of course you could hold it just from the handle there. I do love this little bag. You can't obviously squeeze an awful lot in there, but that's not really what it's been designed for. Take your essentials and let the Nano be that perfect finishing touch to all your outfit ideas. The Le Cabos or tote bag has quickly become a bestseller on Plum Paris's website and I can absolutely see why. Like the entire collection, the thought, care, craftsmanship and individuality that's gone into designing this collection really stands out head and shoulders above the rest. A bit like the numero 8 bucket bag, I don't think I've ever seen such an original forward thinking design for the simple tote bag and I for one am very grateful to have it in my collection. Obviously one of the main pulls with a tote bag is the sheer size of it. I can even get my laptop in here with room for my makeup bag, purse and all my other bits and bobs I take around with me. But these classy and chic fold details just make it feel so luxurious and yet it's a really practical bag at the same time. It's not as structured as say the 7 or the 10, so as you can see the leather straps here, they drape over themselves a little bit when it's standing on its own. But equally I don't think the mane of the bag is going to become any more slouchy than this. I really love the Le Cabos. I think it's practical, it's stylish, it's very wearable, and the colour palette they've used is just beautiful. I don't have the number 9 Palen Paris handbag with me, but I have seen that before when I've borrowed it previously for another video. So let me just quickly tell you a little bit about the pros and cons of that one. But there's definitely more room than say the Mini or the Nano. Again, it's got those really elegant deep folds and the base of the handbag is actually quite large, so I'm imagining you could get quite a few items in there. 
if you do like that design i think it's a very practical handbag for everyday wear and of course it's got the bonus of that sprinkle of effortless french chic about it as well i really hope you've enjoyed this classy and chic french handbag review with the collection Palen paris they are investment pieces but if there's one area i'm always happy to invest in it would be on my handbags especially when i find a brand with such high quality and their prices are a fraction of their competitors. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you've got a favorite between the 10 and the mini, do let me know as well. I shall be back next week with a very exciting haul. So hopefully you'll join me for that. I can't wait to share those pieces with you. Don't forget, if you like this video and you're not already subscribed, it would be really lovely if you'd like to. And also all the links to all my social media channels are in the description box below. Have a wonderful week and hopefully I shall see you next Sunday. Take care.